After the vibrancy of a World Cup on the subcontinent, 1992 represented a switch to the easygoing charms of Australia. The Antipodean warmth and hospitality, plus coloured clothing, floodlights and white balls, had everyone geared up for the best tournament yet. The hosts were hot favourites in their own conditions. Too hot. We just assumed that being at home it was a big advantage and things would go our way, but we really didn't put the hard work leading up into that. Due southeast across the Tasman Sea. New Zealand, neighbours, co-hosts. That horizontal approach to life, always hiding a fierce competitive edge. Victory over Australia in their opening match was just the start. For their innovative captain, there were higher goals. One was to make the semi-finals. Um, two was to be the best fielding side in the world. Uh, and three was to basically produce a number of individual performances that um, made the world stand up. 92 was an introduction to a face that would become more recognisable than any other. Dream come true for me because I uh, uh, always uh, grew up uh, watching big matches, especially the 1983 World Cup that we won. What a magnificent shot! Uh, that really inspired me to do something and I wanted to become a cricketer after watching that. For some, Australian reign was heaven sent. Pakistan were able to earn a vital point against England in a match they were destined to lose. Against South Africa, the famous run out of Inzamam by Jonty Rhodes summed up the malaise. One win from their first five games, but still the captain believed. You always told us we will win this World Cup. We will win this World Cup. Back in South Asia, belief was in short supply. Their devotion to the game never questioned. But losing at home in the semi-finals four years earlier had been a chastening experience. Imran Khan, a man who had played in every previous World Cup, encouraged his team to show their teeth. A cornered tiger is the one who then attacks. When he's cornered, he will then attack. 76 from Amir Sahail in a game they simply had to win against Australia was the response the captain had been demanding. His methods, that magnetism, finally pulling the team together. Great shot from Amir Sahail. He always believed in hard working and he did it himself. Instead of the, I've seen certain cap captors, I don't want to name them, that used to say work hard, work hard, they used to sit and do nothing themselves. But Imran used to do exercise, training, nets, he used to start them off himself and me as youngsters just follow him. That victory over Australia would be enough to edge them past the hosts in a new round robin format. That unlikely point against England, as well as two further victories, changing Pakistan's destiny. Gone, that's it. Michael Whitney is bowled by Wasnam Akram. It's all over. Two points to Pakistan, a great victory. For Australia, defending champions, failure to reach the semi-finals was a huge setback to the rebuilding program down under. It would be just a blip. New Zealand went into their set and therefore John Wright had to go out and captain the side and he had hardly played in the tournament but I filled him in on what to do and you know and he did exactly the opposite. <laughs> it was also New Zealand's misfortune to face a young player of immense skill but what so before the game in the morning he went up to Imran and said look Imran why I'm injured I'm, I won't play Imran said, Inzi, I don't care. Are you injured? You've got a fever? You're and man of the series. But he was powerless when it mattered. He just kept bowling everyone until they got hit. And it was just one of those things. He, uh, he didn't know the, the plan as I had. And um, we, we ended up losing. And Pakistan have won the first semi-final at Eden Park. A magnificent performance by Jarvid Mandan. Inzi Manoh Huck. And look at that. Look at Jarvid. What a performance for the veteran, a magnificent win when you're chasing 262, you have to do all the hard work while the entire Pakistan team has raced onto the field.
News quickly filtered through to Sydney, where England were preparing for their semi-final against South Africa, playing in a World Cup for the first time since the end of apartheid. I believe we were always going to win that game. Uh, South Africans, I'm sure, will beg to differ. But I always felt we were always ahead, um, even though we may have just been ahead. Um, but the way one-day cricket was back then, once you got ahead, more times than not, you stayed ahead. England had put themselves in a strong position, with Graham Hick at his destructive best. The South Africans would keep themselves in with a chance of victory, before Rain reduced the game to an impossible equation. Chasing anything more than a, a runner ball was a huge, huge ask back then, whereas nowadays you do it standing on your head. Uh, obviously then when the rain came down and, and it went up on the board what they needed, um, it was a formality. The outcome, unavoidable, but no less satisfactory. England through to their third World Cup final. But the compelling narrative belonged to Pakistan. Momentum was theirs. Motivation too. The captain had a cause which went beyond the parameters of sporting success. My driving motivation, my, my, what was force that was driving me, was not personal ambitions or, uh, you know, personal success. My, my driving force was that I, we needed to win the World Cup to build the cancer hospital. But Pakistan remained the outsiders against a strong England side. I think we were the best side in the competition. Um, we should have won it. We got a few things wrong. On paper, they were miles. They were much better side than us, but it was our day. I've never been a bit, big fan of training, but I didn't mind doing a bit, but uh, we, over, we overcooked that. We, we wasted too much energy, really, doing what was supposedly the right thing to do, uh, rather than concentrate on the cricket. From 24 for two, Pakistan were able to post 249, again inspired by the resilience of their captain. It was just a good game in the end. I mean, we scored 249, and again, Trent goes to Imran Khan, who made himself to bat at number three. Imagine a captain of Pakistan team doing the World Cup, coming at number three, who's an all-rounder. He did. He made that brave decision, and he got 70 odd in the finals. Balls for his 50. He, he led from the front. I mean, that was his biggest contribution. A man who always believed in winning and leading from the front. During the entire uh, uh, the, the match, I did not have any doubt that we would not win it. Especially once we batted first. Because I knew we had the bowling to bowl them out. What a great delivery. Left arm around the wicket. Alan Lamb has been cleaned up. So to England. Two unplayable deliveries from Wazim Akram summed up that enigmatic Pakistan side. Wazim Akram is on a hat trick. Played on. There was a sense of karma, one of fate, in the MCG that March evening. That's up, up in the air, he's getting under it. This could be victory, it is. Pakistan win the World Cup. A magnificent performance in front of 87,000. The emotion afterwards was, was tremendous uh, because. You know, just that I knew what the sort of wave of happiness that would sweep all Pakistanis. Imran Khan has went inside to victory. What a great victory. We arrived at Lahore Airport. I thought be, there will be people, 1,000, 2,000. It was 80,000 people there waiting for us. The whole street from the airport to the PC hotel in Lahore. It's only 10 minutes drive or 20 minutes drive. It took us seven hours to arrive. We were on an open truck and the whole nation had a smile on their face and that was very satisfying for me, even as a 21 years old.